Hello everyone. What a weekend we've just had. <laughs> it's still time to go wild. Another week, another time to go wild radio podcast. Of course, we are available via YouTube, Podbean, also picked up on Google Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, and TuneIn Podcasts. If you want to contact the show throughout the week, you can do via Facebook or Twitter.com slash TTGW Radio. Drop emails to radio at witnesswild.co.uk or text 07849 767755. Oh, Bayek, what a weekend we've just had. Been a busy one. Stay with us. It's time to go wild. As the hangover kicked in, and I say hangover, post-weekend games hangover, Bayek, welcome to the Time to Go Wild podcast for another week. And as you can probably gather, I think the internet in certain circumstances went into meltdown yesterday between here and Scotland because, of course, the big game for the weekend for a lot of us was the NIHL D1 North Moral League Cup final that was played over two legs between your YKK Witness World and the Dundee Comets. And what a weekend of games it was. We will have a few interviews and a bit of chat go through the game sheets just to reminisce and, uh, well, catch up on a few items of news. Jam-packed show. Let's get going with the usual little bit. Yep, time for the scores. So, the scores from across the leagues we follow pretty much most weeks. Starting on Wednesday with Elite League action. Dundee Stars 3, Cardiff Devils 2, Nottingham Panthers 4, Manchester Storm 2, Glasgow Clan 5, Sheffield Steelers 3. On Saturday, Belfast Giants 7, Five Flyers 1, Manchester Storm 2, Sheffield Steelers 7. Glasgow Clan 5, Dundee Stars 2, Coventry Blaze 0, Nottingham Panthers 1, Cardiff Devils 6, Guildford Flames 2. On Sunday, Nottingham Panthers 2, Belfast Giants 3 after a shootout. Sheffield Steelers 2, Cardiff Devils 3 after a shootout. Guildford Flames 8, Glasgow Clan 2. Five Flyers 2, Coventry Blaze 3, Manchester Storm 3, Dundee Stars 6. Into the EIHA Leagues now. Under 18's North 2 action from Saturday. Sully Hull 1, Sutton 13. Under 16's North 2 from Saturday. Sutton 5, Nottingham 7. Witness 4, Sheffield 4. EIHA Under 14's North 2 action from Saturday. Kingston 7, Manchester 1. Leeds 12, Billingham 0. Blackburn 4, Sheffield 12. Under 12's North action from Sunday. Kingston 8, Billingham 0. WNIHL Women's Premier League action from Sunday. Queen Bees 5. Milton Keynes Falcons 2 NIHL National League action from Saturday Bees 1 Peterborough Phantoms 4 Telford Tigers 4 Raiders 6 Milton Keynes Lightning 4 Basingstoke Bison 8 On Sunday Basingstoke Bison 1 Leeds Knights 4 Raiders 3 Telford Tigers 5 Peterborough Phantoms 5, Sheffield Steel Dogs 2, Swindon Wildcats 5, Milton Keynes Lightning 2, NIHL Division 1 North Morley League Action from Sunday, Nottingham Lions 1, Billingham Stars 5, 
Whitley Warriors 3, Sheffield Scimitars 1, Solihull Barons 8, Solway Sharks 9. NIHL Division 2 North Laidler action from the league. On Saturday, Bradford Bulldogs 5, Coventry NIHL Blaze 2, Hull Jets 10, Altrincham Aces 2. On Sunday, Telford Tigers North 2, 14, Nottingham Lions North 2, 1. And then, last but by no means least, the NIHL Division 1 North Morally Cup Final double leg game. First leg on Saturday. Dundee Comets 3, Witness Wild 3. Therefore, Sunday was basically do or die, both teams, Planet Ice Witness. Final score Witness Wild 4, Dundee Comets 3. Aggregate score Witness Wild 7, Dundee Comets 6 in an absolutely thrilling game. And of course, that means that you're. Witness Wild are the NIHL Division 1 North Morally Cup champions. Caught up with a few people after the game. And this is what we said. What a weekend for the YKK Witness Wild. Bus legs up to Dundee. Bus legs back to the Witness. 3-3 up in Dundee and 4-3 winners on the night in Widness. NIHL D1 North Morley Cup champions and I've caught up with the Sheriff Lee Kemp who is to put it bluntly I think out of juice yeah pretty much uh, like you say the long journey up yesterday it's a long what six six and a half hours on a bus but I think we, we managed it well we went up there with enough time to kind of like like you say shake off those bugs less um, and had a really good game up there uh, we, we just pressured them, we did everything right, we did our game right, to come away with a draw was great and then obviously taking it into today, it was it was anyone's kind of game really but again, you know, we just proved what we, guys, what we can do when we come together as a team and yet again we proved people wrong so yeah, happy, happy weekend really. I mean the pace, it's uh, up there with those, in a way, up there with the kind of pace we were having when we had the lockdown games really, when we had the guys who played National League and you know much higher levels and both teams just matched each other pace for pace, skate for skate all night in both games. Yeah, um, you know it's it's like when Solway come, um, Solway have got guys on two ways and they've got really experienced guys so when we play teams like that we seem to like up our game. And you know, it's no disrespect for when you're playing teams like either a Nottingham or a Blackburn, you kind of sink and we don't play our game. But you know, this weekend they've got some really good guys, and we knew that, so we knew we had to step up, we knew we had to come out hard. Um, and we did that, we did it yesterday, we've done it yet again today. Um, the boys obviously skated hard all weekend, and, and we've got the win. Oh, Kempy, <laughs> Mikey Gilbert crushing the interview again. <laughs> Always does, always does. Oh, bless him. But, you know, tonight, you know, there, were, there was rough and tumbles going on at times, but both teams kept the cools mainly throughout the night and the uh, quarter kept. Everyone looked after each other. Yes, Mikey? Heebie-jeebies tonight, isn't it? <laughs> See what I mean? They can't keep that kid down. So, yeah, but everyone stood their ground. Nothing got too out of hand. Yeah, well, we've said it before, like, we, d we don't shy away from anything, but we're not stupid in doing it. So, you know, we knew that they would come out. When we got a couple of goals up, I think it was, and we knew they were going to come out maybe a bit chippy here and there. And, you know, obviously we're going to protect H in front of our goals. So anything around the crease, we're always going to clear our guys out. And like I say, if, it's, if it needs to be done, it needs to be done. But the lads kept a cool head tonight because we knew what was on stake. And... Um, yeah, nothing stupid and, you know, credit to the fans. Obviously, they're always right behind us. So, and, you know, we've got the trophy. So, it's just a great weekend all around and buzzing, buzzing. I mean, you, you know, you, you think like that first goal, 17 seconds in, that can be a must, massive psychological lift, but you've just got to keep the tension, keep the momentum going. Yeah, we, we switched it around, actually, before um, the period. We, we was trying something new. Um, I didn't know it was 17 seconds, so that's always nice. But uh, yeah, it obviously paid off. And I think the first five minutes or six minutes or so, it's probably the best hockey I've ever seen at Witness. We was just 
quick out the marks we were peppering them we were all over them and we might have took our step off the gas a little bit but um, yeah w when it needed to we up, up and raised it and yeah you know it's just just yeah happy I mean there's some quality finishing there I'm trying to remember names but number 12 for Dundee absolute quality finishing it's you know a couple of goals from him and it was just you could just see that there's some really class players and it's just a case of seeing them in this competition just proves just how good hockey is across SIHL as well. Yeah, because, you know, we only play Solway from the Scottish League um, and we know how good they are. So coming into the weekend, obviously, you know, we're trying to watch things on YouTube or any little clips that we can about um, Dundee to try and work out who their key players are or anything like that. So, you know, yesterday and today was a good kind of standard of obviously Scottish hockey and, you know, the... Solway and Dundee obviously up there with the best of them so we knew it was always going to be hard when you play kind of a team that you've never played before and you don't know nothing about so but we come through and yeah I'm just I'm just dead happy it's another trophy for witness and you know we're a small club and whenever we win things like this it just puts another kind of marker on us you know because everyone thinks that we was never going to get to this point no one thought we was going to get out of the group no one thought we was going to get past Solway we proved everyone wrong and we've done it again in the finals so we just keep making statements from from start to finish and I couldn't be happy for the club in general. I mean, yeah, I mean, you were here, of course, for the very first playoffs win, then the second playoffs win, then the double. You were also part of the squad throughout the um, lockdown games as well. Trophies there. And again, another season, this time morally. And as you say, this league is much faster, much stronger, a bit more physical, a lot better skill, higher skill level, harder work. And everyone's dug in who's played throughout the different levels yeah um you know like you say the trophies are all good and thing even we wanted to show that in this league like you say stepping up and i think the additions that we've had in the team obviously i've played this standard but you know stubbley's and wilcox they've all played this standard so it's just a level head charnock a lot of the lads are new to this league and this level and this intensity so to have us around in the room, you know, keep their level heads and we just keep, we've gelled so well as a team. That's what, you know, I'm well chuffed with. A lot of players coming in that are new, you don't know if you're going to gel straight away or not. And we kind of like clicked from the get though. That's why I think our results from start, you know, up until Christmas really proved that. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy with all the lads in there um, from start to finish, like I say. It's just, just great, just great. Just great. Tom Jackson and <laughs> crashing the interview there. And you can tell just how pleased he is. Our little captain, bless his little cotton socks, how little they are actually in those feet. But, <laughs> but the atmosphere tonight, I mean, one of the biggest crowds and a big shout out, the biggest, one of the biggest 50-50s we've had, £225. But massive crowd, massive noise and even a, a, a good travelling band from Dundee. That's what I love about the fans though, you know, we are a small club. Um, so, you know, yesterday going all, I mean, all the way to Dundee and we, I don't know how many went, but they were probably the noisiest, you know, obviously up there and they, Dundee had a few home fans, but we just out shouted them and, and it's great. And we knew coming into today with a tie, tie game from yesterday that we was going to have everyone here. The stands were full, people are standing up, watching through the plexi. And like you say, 17 seconds in, we scored that first goal and it was just absolutely bouncing. And, and that's what we love. Like all these new guys, like I've mentioned before, they say like how good the fans are here and they've not played like that in front of fans before. So it's just a credit to obviously everyone that comes down and watches us. And we just like, we can't thank everyone enough for, you know, actually paying to come and watch us play. So yeah, you know, thanks to everyone that's obviously come and, and just carry on. Well, Lee, you've been part of the squad from second season, I think it was. And, you know, you've seen the club grow. And as you say, it blows everybody away. And seeing how it's grown, people stay, people come, watch it. And what it's just special, isn't it? It's it, Like you say, it, I mean, it's crazy. We, we don't think, like, you know, we're not professionals. And uh, for the amount of people that do come and watch us, and it's, it's not even like it's a new thing. We've, we've been getting that kind of number for since I started. I remember my first year and I said, like, I'm not used to the amount of fans that come here. And, um, yeah, you know, it's just a credit to everyone here and sure. just come down. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to have a couple of words now with our goaltender, Harrison Walker. Well, Harrison, backstopping that. 
I mean, you were with us for the lockdown games. <sighs> Trophies there tonight must have been just as special, if not more so, because it's you know a proper league and cup campaign. Uh, yeah, no, it were good. Uh, they were a good team, to be fair. But the boys stuck with it and we pulled through. So uh, it was a good performance. The crowd were good. So the full weekend were just just solid. Harrison Walker, best at all at the Liga. Well, there you go. Danny Haid says it all. <laughs> Man of much wisdom there. I mean, you, you've faced a fair few different types of play, different players. You've been peppered with pucks at different times. And tonight, the speed of the game, I suppose that just takes your playing style to another level. Yeah, they came out fast. You know, the Scots are always good. We played like the Solway and all of them and they are a quick team and we knew they'd be similar but on our right it's very small so we knew if we if we just trapped them we'd be all right and we stuck with it and it works so credit to the lads i mean the speed of the game as a goaltender it must affect some of your reactions and where your eye is and i suppose it can be frustrating when things don't quite go the way you want when it you know if it's a slower game and when it gets to a fast game you, you can just be sp- swatting flies with chopsticks yeah um, we like to dictate the, the pace and I, I thought we did that pretty well today you know yesterday was scrappy and they were a bit end to end and no one really took charge of the game but I think today we came out and uh, well we did it so that's, that's that I mean it is tough you're the one player on the ice that typically plays the full uh, <laughs> the full 60 minutes so to speak unless for some reason you know you decide to swap out and you know like the other guys they do take a bit of a breather you take whatever breathers you can get yeah uh, try to keep the puck as long as possible you know the last minute 40 it was tough the legs are hurting from the bus drive yesterday and that but I don't know the boys helped me out so we got we got whistles when we needed and that was that so it was good but uh, I can see you're absolutely shattered. You're a proud man holding the trophy. So I'll let you go, get rested and ready for the next game. So Harrison, thanks very much and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I finally caught up with the little boy who became up and became our captain, Tom Jackson. Well, I'm going to ask a very quick question. Bus legs there and back. Two very busy nights. But a trophy at the end of it, how does that feel? It feels great, you know. It's uh, we, we, we had to work very, very hard to get here, so it's good to be rewarded and have the trophy at the end of it. But credit to Dundee, it was a fantastic weekend of hockey. It's no, it, it looked like it could have gone either way at multiple times yesterday and today. It was very hard-fought game for us, especially with the long drive that we had up there. But then to come out with 3-3, basically where we started, uh, after the 60 minutes was good for us um, and we, we thought we kind of had the, the home home advantage and today being at home with our fans which was fantastic having the building so busy again I mean you, you've been here since almost day one you've seen the club grow I was chatting to Lee before he's been here since season two seeing the club grow and blossom you've had a a life with the club almost now you got the C this year and you got to pick up the trophy at the end it must be something special for you yeah it was the last time I was on the ice with the trophy I was in a wheelchair so it's, uh, it was nice for me the boys reminded me of that, reminded me of that sorry um, so but yeah it was definitely nice um, it's just good to see how, how the team has grown like we, we've become sort of established within the league um, and now moved up the league and, and we've proven a lot of people wrong um, people that thought we we may have not done as well and we, we, we're pulling together as a unit and buying into to whatever we're doing week in week out and which is great I mean this, the D1 speed I mean you've, you've been aware of it anyway in, in the past prior to coming to Witness but I think it's even got faster no yeah definitely has um, I think I think the leagues in general are, are just it, it, it's, it's totally different it's going from just it, it's just everything is different everything's more refined you make one mistake and you get punished by that one mistake so it's it's been a, a massive learning curve for a lot of the players that have come up from the D2 team it's been it's good we started off by bringing in playing them tournaments and bringing in some players where they were at that level already or higher um, and they've sort of helped us develop as players ourselves which 
now we're, we're, we're sort of using as a as a progression for, for our own sort of um, what's the word Pro- career yeah so. yeah I mean those behind closed doors games over the summer were a valuable stepping stone to anybody wanting to play you know, D2 D1 National League the spread of players across all of the teams show just how much quality there is yeah definitely I think I think it's it's good for the sport that it's growing like uh, you've seen in the, the, the international stage the, the GB team are getting more renowned more well known um, you've got a lot more players coming up from the, the youth development in Widness especially which is good to see we've got quite a few guys training with us from the 18s and things which is great um, helping out Gilbert as well by starting coaching even though I need to finish my exam I've not done that yet but uh, yeah it's, it's just really good to have the um, the opportunity to see the game grow uh, I'm getting old myself don't know how much longer I can do that I can play for with work and things other commitments going on so I'm just enjoying every moment while I still can I mean you're one of the more, well one of the senior members of the team I've seen you grow and grow but some of the little ones one of your super fans tonight you could if his smile got any bigger it would have met at the top of his head having a photograph taken with you and to me as a, as a spectator and supporter that shows just how much it means to the fans and of, you know, for yourself it must be special to see that reaction yeah definitely it's, it's great to see it's like little Ewing comes on with the uh, uh, hockey excellence I think Mikey calls it on a Saturday morning I, I came down the other week to help him out and he's faced little then when he saw me so it's just good to see that 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 sort of the, the small things have just given a little bit back to someone who, who I don't have to but yeah, I'm more than happy to because I, to, to see him smile at the end of the day is great to come and week in week out and see every single fan in the building um, it's great for the club it's great for the game of hockey hopefully more and more people will get involved with playing and, and, and supporting us as well while we, while we go on and that was one of the biggest crowds I've seen this year it was close to what we were having a few years ago and the noise it shows just what a cauldron that this rink can be we may only have fans seated on one side so the noise goes above the plexi but we must have been too deep in a lot of places nearly three deep in some parts tonight and even then the noise just billows around the rink it, it, it must get the hairs on the back of your head going and the adrenaline pumping yeah definitely it's, it's sort of it, it, it gets you going it's it's sort of a thing where if you, you you have a moment where you're a bit down and you hear the, you hear the crowd behind you and things it just adds to to, to everything that we do it, it's a reason why we're there and a reason why we're playing it, to have our, I don't even know how many people but I think we sold out on the online t- tickets tonight and to have all them people turn up um, and, and just support the team in general is, is incredible um, and it's just great to, to yeah be able to win something and give something back to the, the fans yeah well we, I, I think everyone in this rink tonight is so proud of everyone's efforts I mean Dundee top credit to them brilliant game from them start to finish both games one goal in it just shows how tight it was now competitive yeah definitely it was back and forth all weekend I think last yesterday in, in Dundee we got there and we were a bit a bit leggy so we knew it was going to be tough to come off the bus from six hours and they've done they've done the exact same today though today so it we were, the both both teams had, the, had that issue of you you're gonna have to play one away leg and one home leg uh we just pulled together and got got out of there yesterday with the three three and then today be able to take the lead at, our, uh, at home when we're all a bit more rested and not had the the six hour drive up to uh, dundee on a bus in mean, that, as I said before in the earlier interview, the, 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 that quick goal just gave the crowd a boost, it gives the team a boost, makes the opposition chase the game, and they chased it all night. And Wild managed to keep in front. Yeah, massively. It was a, a, a credit to uh, the coaching staff that we have. They um, set out with a game plan of, of changing the, the, the start of the game up, which we, we, we've not done this year so far, and it, it paid dividends. So you can see we went out there and, what, 20 seconds in, we'd scored one goal. So it just, that, that one move for, for the rest of the game then put Dundee on their heels, and although they, they fought back a hell of a lot and it was a great game at the end of the day, um, they just couldn't 
get that that edge back in front of us, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, but you know, 60 minutes up there, 60 minutes down here. Thankfully, for all of our hearts, <laughs> no heart attacks of overtime and penalty shots. A 4-3 win for the final game. Noise, everything. It's what can you ask? You can't ask for more. No, you can't ask for more. It was great. It's a great weekend of hockey. And I uh, can't wait to go home and sleep. <laughs> and on that final note, I will let you go home and sleep. Tom, as ever, thanks for joining me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much, Carl. I've got a little bonus. She sits behind the scenes, but she's there. Our lovely chaplain, Linda Aitken. Linda, how's, how's the, uh, the heart rate after that? <laughs> oh, very fast. <laughs> Super exciting. Uh, no words to say, really no words. I mean, the, the, the atmosphere in the rink tonight, it was back with where it was not so long back. Oh. Everything firing on all cylinders and everyone was bouncing. Yeah, electrifying. That's all I can say, it was electrifying. It was, oh, good old days are back with us again. That's all I can say. You know, everybody, you could see just how much this game meant to everyone with the club. I mean, you chat with the guys in a different capacity to how the coaches work but you know it, it must mean a lot to them just the fact that you're there I hope so <laughs> I'm there if I'm needed I'm there as an encouragement to help them G them along make sure they're not getting into too many scraps or if they do if they do I'm there in the background to put my hand on the shoulders and say come on start again <laughs> And uh, apparently you're, you're rather dab hand in the kitchen as well for them. <laughs> what, what was on, was there anything special on the menu for tonight for them? Uh, yes, sandwiches, as well as two lots of sausage rolls, cake, quiche, and it was chicken and stuffing sandwiches. Oh, don't leave me alone with sausage rolls. I can't stop me eating them. But, you know, you've, you've seen the club blossom. You've been here for several years now. You've been here as we won trophies. And tonight, yet again, the... the the, you can just see the fans are bouncing off the walls effectively and even the Dundee fans have been a credit to their club tonight oh absolutely it's been just electrifying exciting the tension of the game oh the screaming I think my voice went at one point I was shouting and screaming that much I wonder it didn't bake the plexiglass because I was banging on it that hard everybody was it, but it was amazing really they played a fantastic game Fantastic. The speed is phenomenal of tonight's game. Everybody was on a knife edge. You know, in terms of as a fan's perspective, you can't ask for more, can you? Oh, no, no. Everything was in there. The drama, the tension, a few little scraps. Penalties called that we, you know, nobody thought they should have. <laughs> so it's just all of that amalgamated into one. Oh, exciting, riveting. That's all I can say. It's exactly why you want to come to an ice hockey match, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Everybody should come to an ice hockey match, <laughs> especially one like tonight, because it was just both sides played to their best. And we just got there. Yay! <laughs> Well, on that note, a, a definite ye. <laughs> Linda, lovely to catch up with you as always. You take care. Catch you soon. Cheers, Colin. Bye. A big thank you to everybody who <laughs> I managed to call her. <laughs> you could see just how it meant to everybody. I mean, first of all, I'm going to say a big shout out to Dundee. They came with such pace. Nobody really knew much about what was going to be expected. And all the fans who travelled up to Dundee on Saturday and then back for the game on Sunday, you troopers, utter troopers. And then the bunch of Dundee fans who were troopers as well and came down to witness for the Sunday game. And absolute credit to their team, credit to the sport. Lovely to see you. Shame I didn't get over to say a proper hello, but we hope you all had a cracking time. OK, the result didn't go your way, but... In terms of excitement and drama, you couldn't really have asked for more. As for the noise in the barn last night, oh my goodness, that was reminiscent of uh, of a, a few days gone by, and hopefully it will be back a bit more often. The goals went in, the roof nearly came off, and then when the final buzzer went, I actually did think it was going to come off again. Good job, that roof's 
screwed down and fastened down well at Planet Ice wouldn't this because it wouldn't be the speakers and the music sending it off it would be the noise from the hockey fans so well may as well do a quick review of the game sheets so on Saturday up in Dundee scoring opened at 1 minute and 47 seconds Danny Hayde from Rich Hager and Chris Wilcox, Dundee answered back very quickly at 5 minutes and 10 seconds. Lewis McIntosh from Scott Geddes. Then, 8 minutes 38, Jonathan McBean from John Dolan. 2-1 to Dundee. Widness answered back very quickly at 9-11. Vlad Volkanov from Rich Hager. Then, at the end of the period, 14-46... It was Matt Barlow from Liam Charnock, took it to 3-2, and that's the way it stood for quite some time. 38 minutes and 40 seconds was the next goal. Uh, Darren Donaldson at 30-48, unassisted, 3-3, and that's where it stood. Lots of action, lots of uh, stuff happening. Many of you managed to tune in online to see the game. And a big thank you for them streaming that, because, of course, a lot of people would have wanted to see it. Of course, the Wild home leg will be available throughout the week at different points, courtesy of Drop the Puck. But it finished 3-3. In many ways, is that the best result for a two-leg final? Often can be, because it means the final game, the second leg, is all to play for. You want to put it in context? It's your Stanley Cup. It's your Game 7 Stanley Cup all to play for. or Everything on the ice, go for it. And didn't it just deliver? Oh my goodness. Drama, drama, drama. 17 seconds it took into the game. 17 seconds. Now nobody believed it was going to happen so quick. Wham! Straight in. Tom Stubbley from Vlad's Volkanovs and Liam Charnock. And... The roof, I thought, was about to come off. Five minutes and one second. Short-handed now for uh, for Dundee. Jonathan McBean. He was on fire all night, I must admit. From Michael Ireland and Scott Geddes. It turned the tables. One all. That's the way it ended at the end of the first. Second period, then. 24-44 on the power play. Rich Hager from Tom Stubbley and Jay Robinson. And then another power play goal at 27.57. This time Danny Hayde on target again from Tom Stubbley and Liam Charnock. Ah, and that's the way it finished at the end of the... Se oh, sorry, no, no. We had a goal at the, for the second period for Dundee. I'm getting ahead of myself. Even-handed this time. Jonathan McBean from Scott Geddes. That partnership was firing well all night. Uh, Jonathan brilliant performance from him I must say absolute standout player so there we go 3-2 end of the second period third period commences took a bit of a while it was very much end to end tick tack tick tack all game 49 minutes 16 seconds Liam Charnock from Tom Stubbley and Joe Greaves it's now a 4-2 game Dundee were not going to go quietly, and quite rightly so. The excitement kept going and kept going and kept going. 53 minutes, 27 seconds. Lewis McIntosh from Jonathan McBean, again on the score sheet, from Bernard Brown. It's a 4-3 game. Absolutely everything fired at everyone. And the final buzzer went, <laughs> and then the noise Everything happened. It was phenomenal. And Dundee looked absolutely heartbroken, and quite rightly so. They put in an absolutely stellar performance all night. Didn't stop. Wild didn't stop. It could have gone either way. And it was a true final. The way a final should be played. Everything out there. And just fantastic atmosphere. A big thank you, of course, to everybody within League, within Planet Ice, from the home legs perspective, um, League representatives who were there last night, and the officials for such, you know, a well-run game, brilliantly put together. 
Um, the goaltending stats from Saturday. Uh, Tony Tammy for the for the Dundee Comets, 29 shots, 89.66% save. Harrison Walker, 41 shots for a 92.68% save. And then last night, uh, Harrison Walker, 32 shots for a 90.63% save. And Tony Tammy peppered with 51 shots for 92.16%. So it wasn't as though the goaltenders didn't have to do much all night. They were kept very, very busy. And both goaltenders pulled off some fantastic saves. And players diving left, right and centre to intercept pucks. So that they wouldn't get to the goaltender. Um I, I think it was Vlad's for the Wild um, went into this one, these diving ones head first, and I think he took the puck almost on his head. But it's like, you know, everybody just kept going all night, and the atmosphere at Planet Ice Witness, massive shout out from all of us within the club and the organization to everybody who attended last night. Brilliant atmosphere. Couldn't have, we couldn't really have asked for more. It was lively, it was busy, everyone was sensible about how they went about themselves. It was noisy, it was just a it, it was nice to feel like it was that that cauldron atmosphere once again. So there you have it. The NIHL Division One North Morally Cup has been decided. The champions are your YKK Witness Wild. Silverware again, no, and I mean, in many cases, people were going to try and predict where the cup can go. But as we all know, cup competitions in sports can bring out a lot of surprises. And I think if people had been predicting who was going to be in the final for this competition, I don't think anybody was going to predict it would have been Witness and Dundee. But to be honest, the quality of the matches, the performances on both days. It didn't disappoint. It delivered on the button, true advert for hockey, and from myself to both teams, thank you for a fantastic game, fantastic weekend, and a performance to be proud of. In other news, we also had our under-16s in action on Saturday at Planet Ice Witness in a bit of a ding-dong game with uh, Sheffield. Low penalty minutes, I must admit. Oh, and a shout-out, actually, a bonus shout-out I'm going to give. Um, our officials were... Um, well, one of our officials from last night, Ethan Arnold, had actually officiated the under-16s match on the Saturday on his own. And he'd had a very busy weekend as well. <laughs> it was very late getting to bed, apparently, because he'd had a late-night game in, she- in, in Leeds after our under-16s game. And due due to current situations and last minute unavailability, he actually officiated our under sixteens game on his own. Did a stellar job, but uh, the the game was actually very very exciting. Actually, <laughs> believe it or not, um, Sheffield opened the scoring at seven forty five with Alfie Walters. Witness answered back at 19 minutes 13 seconds from Liam Yarwood and then 33.08 Sheffield took the lead again with Rocco Mallon Widness and no then they extended their lead I should say at 35.28 with uh, Alicia Potts and uh, Le- I think it's Leland or Le- Leland Leland Walker apologies <laughs> I get my tongue in a twist all the time um, so then it was uh, 3-1, then went to 3-2, uh, Cody Ogden from Liam Yarwood. Then it was a, a 4-2 game, 39-23, Alfie Walters again, this time assisted by Lincoln Wake. So Sheffield are now four goals to two up, Witness somehow turned things on their head, 39-43, Cody Ogden from Luke Alston, and then at 40 minutes and 4 seconds, uh, Jackson Kirk-Jones from Liam Yarwood, and it finished at 4 all, and those games do actually finish in a draw. And phenomenal game, brilliant atmosphere again. 
Both teams put on a really good performance, skated it well, and you know, it was going to be a tough one. Both teams knew, and a 4-4 draw, put my neutrals hat on, a fair result, I think. Neither Both teams can be disappointed they didn't get the win, but both teams shouldn't be disappointed that they, you know, with the draw, to be honest, because I think in the end, it was a fair result. And uh, you don't really want it to sort of un, un destroy the game when you get to that point where one team's been dominant and then one team manages to come back. And it, it was a pleasure to be there. So uh, do you have still have plenty of junior games coming up throughout the uh, the coming weeks. So come on down and give them some extra support. And now. Finally, in terms of uh, leaguey stuff, quick look at your um, Division One North Morley League for your witness YKK Witness Wild. Current after the recent weekend, uh, eighth position Nottingham Lions, twenty-one games, eight points. Seventh place is the Blackburn Hawks, seventeen games and fourteen points. Sixth Billingham Stars, twenty-one games and sixteen points. Fifth the Sheffield Scimitars, twenty-one games and nineteen points. Fourth place, 18 games for your YKK Witness Wild and 20 points. Solihull Barons back up to third, 20 games and 21 points. In second, Whitley Warriors, 19 games and 32 points. And top of the shop still, the Solway Sharks, 19 games and 36 points. But as you can probably gather, seventh might be the Blackburn Hawks on 17 games and 14 points. But there's four games between them and Billingham and only two points. So you know, 14 points to 16 to 19 points. Even the Sheffield Scimitars in fifth. And even sort of pushing Widness and Solly Hull. A couple of games in hand wins and Blackburn could shoot up the table. Anything can happen. And Nottingham now, three wins on the board. Anything can happen. This is why we wrote a hockey. This is why we follow it. And this is why we enjoy it so much. <laughs> and now, I think, before we get into some other items of news... Whoop, whoop. That's the sound of the police. Whoop, whoop. That's the sound of the bees. Uh, better just quickly go through uh, a few recent uh, penalties that have been sort of flying around online. First up, I'll go to a Billingham Stars Whitley Warriors game from the 13th of February. Um, Whitley Warriors, this applies to Dean Holland. He was given an unsportsmanlike conduct and bringing the game into disrepute. Uh, Holland is currently serving a suspension from the sport and video footage clearly shows that he is involved in an incident between periods. We've shown, throwing, shown to throw a player from Billingham to the floor uh, Actually, there is no excuse for this. Uh, he is therefore suspended for four more games. Eee. Oh dear. And then, of course, the other weekend, February the 13th, down in Nottingham. Nottingham Lions v Blackburn Hawks. Many people have seen the footage. Make of it what you will. The current standing from the league as published... Um, Blackburn Hawks, Reese Kearney Witter, uh, fighting an unwilling opponent. He's been given a suspension until the 30th of June 2022, but he is not currently eligible to sign for an NIHL club until the 1st of July 2024. Um, Callum Ruddick, fighting an unwilling opponent, same suspension. Suspended until 30th of June 2022 and not eligible to sign for an NIHL club until the 1st of July 2024. Uh, Craig Lucekovic, five for fighting, five plus game for res resisting an official. Penalty stands as called on the night. Uh, the player is suspended for a further two games for resisting the referee. And the other penalties for players for Nottingham Lions, Zach Yokoyama for the Nottingham Lions, five for fighting, five in game for resisting official. The penalty stands as called on the night and no sus uh, additional suspensions for the player. Uh, the, the other um, suspension is for Blackburn's coach Oliver Lomax for failing to control the bench. The current penalty reads that 
Ollie Lomax has been suspended from all ice hockey involvement until the 30th of June 2024. Um, the league won't accept an adult in a position of leadership to instigate or encourage a bench clearance. The IHA, from an insurance and risk assessment perspective, cannot accept such behaviour from a coach in charge. The IHA is aware that a coach in charge, so is aware that the coach can change, and the IHA would like it will be willing to accept a plan to return to coaching from the first of July, twenty twenty three. This would be conditional on the coach proactively contacting the IHA coaching and education program in January 2023, meeting with a panel of his coaching peers and agreeing a series of coach education uh, that demonstrates a change in the coach's approach and mentality to the game. So all that information is off the EIHA website. Look at it, make of it what you want. And that's the decisions as currently standing. You will have seen some press releases as well from the Blackburn Hawks. And I suppose anything can change. As far as we can see, that is the current standpoint from the league. And that's what we make of it. So yeah, very, very tough stance on those incidents. And that's what is made of it. Hence why. That's the sound of the police. That's the sound of the beast. The decisions have been made. Well, a couple of other little items of news. One in particular that comes to mind, again from the EIHA, the uh, Junior Nationals weekend has been confirmed for Sheffield in May. The games will take place in Ice Sheffield. The top two teams from the four under 12s regions will compete over the weekend of the 14th and 15th of May. While the two under the top two under fourteen, under sixteen, and under eighteen teams from Division One in the North and South leagues will compete over the weekend of the twenty first and twenty second of May. So that is the big junior finals weekend that will be held between the, on the fourteenth and fifteenth of May for the under twelves, and the twenty first and twenty second of May for the under. 14, under 14s, 16s and 18s from Division 1, North and South. So some big stuff going on there. Final little bit of... We'll just do a little bit of um, league news from the Elite League because we don't often cover much from the Elite League these days. Uh, league is getting big, bigger and bigger I and mean, in terms of the number of games, I mean, there's like... 30 plus games already have been played in the Elite League, but the current standings you've got Five Flyers in 10th on 20 points, Manchester Storm currently in 9th place on 27 points, Dundee Stars in 8th on 29 points, 7th place is Glasgow Clan 30 points, joint points on 30, but in 6th place are the Coventry Blaze. Guildford Flames are in 5th on 32 points. The Nottingham Panthers in 4th on 38 points. Cardiff Devils 3rd on 55 points. Belfast Giants in 2nd on 56 points. Top of the shop of the Elite League. Sheffield Steelers on 58 points. But that is a it's a tough league, the Elite League. So anything can happen. Very tight there really between Cardiff and Sheffield and Belfast. So... See what happens with all of that. And such a packed show, it's going to be a long one. We have, in terms of fixtures, a bonus fixture I'm going to mention right now before we do the sponsors. This Sunday at Planet Ice Witness, if you want a bit of Twilight, or I should say late night hockey, this Sunday, 26th of February, the Cheshire Pistons take on the Altrincham Jets rec hockey game, 10.30pm. That's 10.30pm this Sunday. Planet Ice Witness, Cheshire Pistons against the Altrincham Jets. Now, of course, we always say a big thank you, of course, to all of our sponsors. Title sponsor YKK, as well as Sprakes and Son of Witness, Straight In, MPG Maintenance Property Services, Crosscheck Clothing, the Coach Company, University of Salford, 
Planet Ice and our charity, the Halton Haven Hospice. And, uh, of course, cross-check clothing were at the rink at the weekend. So I, I noticed a few people were indulging in a, a little bit of um, cross-check clothing. Another shout-out of where, as well. A big, big shout-out to um, 5050 and also for the Chucker Duck. Big sales. It was raining ducks this week. I haven't seen it rain so many ducks for quite some time. And congratulations to the winners of the Chucker Duck. And the 5050 broke the bank. Absolute record breaking. Thank you to everyone who took part. £225 prize. We all know who won it. <laughs> no, no, we don't begrudge them. Because you know, anyone can win it on any day. And fantastic, fantastic. Thank you to everyone who bought tickets. It, you know, it, it's just brilliant. Can't say any more than that for that kind of uh, of a you know, prize. Of course, if you want to contact Witness Wild or check out things Witness Wild throughout the week, you can do via Facebook or Twitter.com slash Witness Wild. We have Instagram, Instagram.com slash Witness Wild official, and our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash Witness Wild Ice Hockey Club, where the podcasts are posted, as well as through Podbean. And we also have. Uh, the videos where possible from around the clubs and all of our video providers. <sighs> Time to get on now with the fixtures. Okay, regular fixtures. This Saturday, 26th of February, our under 10s are in Telford for cross ice action at 20 past four. Then on then in the afternoon as well, we got our under 12s are in Billingham at half past five and the under 14s are also in Billingham at quarter past seven on Sunday Sheffield's under 16s host the witness under 16s at quarter past six and your YKK witness wild are back in action on Sunday at Planet Ice witness 5 30 p.m. face off against the Whitley Warriors and then it's March we're coming into March already Saturday 5th of March under 12s action for our witness under 12s hosting Kingston under 12s at 20 past 3 followed by our under 14s hosting Billingham's under 14s at 10 to 5 on Sunday our under 10s are in Manchester for action in cross ice action at 20 past 4 Solihull's under 16s host the witness under 16s at 10 past 7 and the Whitley Warriors host our YKK Witness Wild up in Whitley Bay at 5pm. And one more weekend, the Saturday 12th of March, the Kingston Under 12s will be hosting Witness Under 12s at half past 12 in the afternoon. And then back at Planet Ice Witness, Witness Under 16s host Grimsby Under 16s at 20 past 3. Witness Under 18s host the Sutton Under 18s at 5pm. Solway Sharks will be hosting your YKK Witness Wild up the road in Scotland at 7pm on Saturday the 12th of March. And then we have on Sunday the 13th of March the Kingston Diamonds hosting the Witness Wild Ladies at 12.30. And back at Planet Ice Witness, YKK Witness Wild host the Solihull Barons at 5.30pm. And that about rounds up the fixtures for another week well as you can gather absolutely packed show I'm going to round it up now we had a few birthday shout outs so don't miss anyone's name anyone who's had a birthday at the weekend or coming up over the week we hope you have a happy birthday any special announcements drop them through to us you can do it throughout the week through facebook and twitter.com slash ttgwradio or you can just drop them through at the penalty box and we'll get them bounced up to me at the announcer's desk for the games. In the meantime, enjoy yourselves. We hope the internet recovers after going into a bit of a meltdown regarding everything with this wild at least. Enjoy your hockey wherever you get it for another week. This has been the Time to Go Wild radio podcast. Wherever you get your hockey, enjoy yourselves. Till next time, ta-ra. Ta-ra.